Anyone who has an oil-fired boiler or furnace is familiar with this. This is the oil tank. Now if you're lucky, the oil tank is inside the basement where the gauge is easily accessible and you can see how much oil you have. However, for some folks, the oil tank is either outside in an inconvenient place or buried underground. Now I'm going to show you a way where you can tell exactly how much oil you have down to the gallon using a quick and simple fix. Now around the side of my Beckett oil burner, you can see that it's set to run at a certain pressure, in this case 140 PSI. This is a fairly common pressure to run at and a lot of oil boilers use this. It also uses a standard oil nozzle and you can see I'm using a .75 nozzle. And what that means is that this nozzle is rated to .75 gallons per hour at 100 PSI. So in order to calculate what the gallons per hour will be used at 140 PSI, you need to use a conversion table. So using that conversion table, you should be able to calculate exactly how much oil your burner is using based on the number of hours it has been running. And I'll show you how to add a timer to count that up. So this is my system. This is a 20-year-old Burnham PV74. Uh, it's basically got uh, an upgraded hydrostat. There's a Beckett burner and Honeywell controller. And then there's the timer that I added. The first step is to make sure that the power to the boiler is off so you don't get electrocuted. And then all the wires you need to access are beneath this uh, Honeywell controller right here. So I'll show you how to get that off and how to make the connection. So you can take off the controller by accessing these two screws. There's one here and there's one in the back. You don't have to take them out all the way. And once you get them loose, then the controller can just slide right off, exposing the controls and wires underneath. So this is my hydrostat and basically it controls the burner and tells it when to turn on and off. And it does that by sending line voltage, 120 volts, through this corrugated metal cable that goes over here into the burner controller. And it basically just has a white neutral and a hot black wire. And those feed into the actual controller and tell the motor when to turn on and when the pump to turn on and the igniter to ignite. So basically, in order to attach my timer, I just want to tie into those two wires. Basically, whenever it's receiving voltage, the timer will be running. So I basically connected, using wire nuts, I teed into that connection right here and right here. And I ran those cables, or the wires, out through this black cable right here. And that black cable goes right into the back of my timer unit. Here's the timer unit itself. It's an Omron H7ET submodel FBV1. These timers are fairly expensive if you order them new. However, they can usually be found used on eBay for around $10 to $20. And what this particular model does is every time there's a voltage, AC or DC, connected to those pins there, as shown on the left, it'll start counting up. I've also got a little reset button wired in on the right terminals to zero it out when I need to. Now the only thing you have to be careful of is that those wires, this, this cable here, this has got 120 volts in it when it's active. So I wanted to do best I could to make sure that doesn't come in contact with anything metal. And I'm going to be taping that up. So you can see I've got that black wire coming out of the burner controller. And that now goes up to my timer, which is connected up here. And I've just stuck it to the back of the controller just for a convenient mounting place. So now, whenever this burner is running, that timer will be counting up. And I'll, sh I'll demonstrate that right now. You can see the sight glass on the left. See? You can see the timer is counting up by seconds. And it'll continue to do that as long as the burner is running. And I can reset the timer anytime I want just by pressing the button. Now you simply multiply the number of hours on the burner by the nozzle flow rate that you calculated earlier and you get the total number of gallons used by the burner.